Hello everyone. Welcome to the Sci-Fi Dragon channel. I'm in the process of rebuilding this channel, so I'd really appreciate it if you'd click the like and subscribe buttons to help me grow my channel. But uh, do that after you watch the video. Let's get to it. This video is about the whys and hows of using vignettes and dioramas to display your finished models. There's a companion video titled The Split Level Diorama, in which I'll take you step by step through building a diorama landscape more complex than my usual flat terrain scenes. If you're new to model building as a hobby, the first question you might be asking is, what are vignettes and dioramas? Well, vignettes and dioramas are simply background settings in which finished models are displayed. They can also be standalone scenes that tell their own story. The next question you might be pondering is, do all model builders display models in vignettes or dioramas? No, not everyone builds dioramas. There are good reasons why a modeler may choose not to create vignettes or dioramas to set off their finished models. Creating scenery is an added expense. The more complex your backdrops are, the more materials you'll need, and the more a scene will cost to create. Some modelers wish to focus their monetary resources on buying new model kits, which is not a bad idea considering the cost of kits these days. Aside from the cost, vignettes and dioramas also require an investment of extra time. Some modelers would rather skip building a diorama and move on to building their next model kit. Lastly, there's the matter of space. No, not outer space, silly. I mean display space. Even a small vignette, like this Panzer I tank hunter, takes more space to display than the model alone. If you don't have a lot of shelf space for your models, Vignettes or dioramas may simply not be a practical way to display your models. Another question some newer modelers may ask is, how do vignettes and dioramas improve my finished model? Well, they don't actually improve the model. They add a degree of realism by creating a sense of time and place. They add interest by telling a story about where the model is and what's going on. An appropriate background setting can add interest to any type of model. A car, a plane, a boat. Dioramas can even be made to accent science fiction models. I'm sure most experienced modelers have their own definitions of the term vignette and diorama. Personally, I classify my small, simple scenes as vignettes. In fact, the term vignette means small scene. Dioramas are larger scenes with more visual elements and details. Let's start with vignettes. Here are a few examples. A good example of a small, simple scene it's this one with a German soldier learning to operate a remote-controlled Goliath bomb. Just the suggestion of brick walls is all that's needed to set the scene. This is an even simpler vignette. Simple sandy terrain places this Panzer I tank hunter in a North African desert with Rommel's DAK. Likewise, a simple suggestion of ground surface enhances the appearance of this Canadian ram tank. Science fiction models can benefit from a little bit of landscaping too. Some gray sand and a few hand sculpted paper mache rocks make a compact lunar landscape for this lunar rocket ship. Size alone is not the deciding factor in determining whether something is a vignette. This Jupiter II model sits on an 8 inch by 11 inch display base, but the scene is as simple as the one I used for the Luna rocket ship. 
just some craft sand plus a few plastic aquarium plants is all it took to put the Jupiter 2 on another planet. I refer to the scenes that I just showed you as flat terrain scenes. This type of simple flat terrain is easy to build. There are just three steps. Step 1. Cut a piece of sheet styrene plastic to use as a base for your scene. Thicker plastic, ranging from 030 to 060, is best. If you're going to put your model in a display case, the case determines the size of the piece of plastic you're going to cut. Cut the styrene to fit inside the case. Step 2. Cover the surface of your styrene base with a thin layer of craft glue. Elmer's glue will do just fine. Step 3. Sprinkle on the landscaping material needed to create the desired scene or setting. For example, for a desert scene, craft sand and some fine gravel will do nicely to create your ground cover. For greener scenes, a combination of turf and grass should be applied as desired. Now let's talk about dioramas. As with vignettes, size alone does not define a diorama. It's more a matter of the degree of detail involved in the scene. Dioramas tell more of a complete story than a vignette does. Here are a few examples. Here's an example of a fairly large, highly detailed diorama. Sitting on a 7 inch by 13 and a half inch base, this is a German checkpoint somewhere in Western Europe. Note the multiple vehicles. There are tons of details in this scene. Two different mini art kits provided the German officer and the civilian couple who are being asked for their papers. The couple's car is a Bronco kit. The foreground is occupied by a farm wagon scratch built from balsa wood. The grumpy old farmer is from another mini art kit, but his mule, his crate of piglets, and the milk cans are from Tamiya kits. In the background, there's a Hanamog half track. Added details here include a Tamiya soldier reloading an Italieri MG34 with an open loading gate. The 27mm anti-tank gun at the front of the Hanamog was a separate kit that I used to replace the Hanamog's forward machine gun. I also added a radio operator and a detailed radio set at the front of the half-track. Between all the kits that were used for this scene and the landscaping materials, this diorama cost about $100 to build and takes up a good bit of shelf space. So it's a prime example of why some modelers don't build dioramas. On the other hand, it does tell a nice detailed story. Next up is a 5 inch by 9 inch scene set in France. A signpost sets the location. The Panzer II C's commander is obviously looking for directions, hence the map in his hand. The scene has some amusing elements. For example, I've got a nosy little farm boy drawing attention to the driver trying to fix his Kubelwagen. Note the detailed engine inside the car. At the rear of this diorama, the farmer's wife is being approached by a soldier with a bottle of wine. I guess he's hoping the farmer has a daughter or two that he can get lucky with. This is a relatively small scene, but with lots of detail contributing to its story. 
There's the narrow dirt road leading up to the farmhouse, the flowers, the well with a bucket on a rope, the picket fence, the water bucket in the lady's hand, the bottle of wine, the map in the commander's hand, the car's detailed engine, and so on. For this next scene, I used a 3D approach to creating my backdrop. The Sherman tank and M8 howitzer motor carriage are rolling through a bombed out town. To add some extra depth and realism, I set the buildings and rubble on both sides of the vehicles instead of just behind them. Not all dioramas have to center around vehicles. Some tell a story without a centerpiece like a car or tank or plane. This humorous little scene depicts a British photo studio turning out <clears throat> French postcards for the boys up on the line. At only three and a half by nine and a half inches, this scene is small enough to be a vignette, but it's packed with details. It features a scratch-built studio camera and tripod, a scratch-built wooden door, known as the printing on the door, there are cast resin oil jugs in the scene being photographed, and backdrop rolls made of construction paper. The scratch-built studio lights have 3 millimeter LEDs for bulbs. The figure models are from a Prizer nude figures kit. To set the time period, there's even a World War II recruiting poster behind the photographer. As you can see, I think creating scenes for my models is worth the time, imagination, effort, and the cost that goes into producing those scenes. For those of you new to modeling, I'd suggest you try your hand at creating at least one vignette or diorama just for the experience. However, only do it if you can afford the cost, the time, and the display space. Designing and creating settings for your models can be a fun experience, but if this area of modeling isn't for you, that's okay too. Just have fun building what you enjoy building.